Hi, everybody. How are you? So if I, if I wasn't a risk-taking guy, I wouldn't even have this thing here. I'd be showing you a cool video that would make you cry with respect to how we're using this thing today. But what we're going to do is I'm going to invite um, a guy that I work with to, to come join us as well to help illustrate um, what it is that we're talking about here. And we are using the same uh, Wi-Fi connection that all of you guys are using. So if you could postpone going to your websites, that would be great. Um, normally, when, when a Vigo is installed someplace, the IT guys can set it up so that you don't have these, these kinds of interferences so that anybody can go wherever they want and talk to whoever they, whoever they want to. Um, and if we could go to my first slide, that would be great. Let me tell you a little bit about how we first, uh, we, we first started. So I come out of the video conferencing industry. And um, throughout the years, people have always looked at us and said, hey, can you bring us some technology that not only enables us to, um, to see and hear, but also to move around? And there are a lot of applications where that's a good thing. And I'll talk more about those in a, in a minute. Um, but in doing that, it's always been very expensive and very complex to deliver something like that. Uh, we looked at various products and developments and models, and um, we could never find that we could build a product for under about $100,000. Um, but since then, um, now with Wi-Fi every, everywhere and 4G LTE coming, the lower cost components happening, um, we've been able to create something that is truly affordable. So what you're seeing here is the first of our, uh, of our line of products that we're developing, um, uh, which is about $6,000, which is a huge decrease from, you may have seen some other products in, in the healthcare space that are out there. So we're, we're really focused on cost and simplicity and deployability as, as being you know, critical elements in, in terms of what we're going to do. Uh, this is John. John's wired. Let's see if we can hear him. Hi, how is everybody today? Can you hear me? Yeah, great. Where are you, John? Excellent. I'm doing just great here in sunny Nashua, New Hampshire. <laughs> it's raining here. Or is it still raining outside? Yeah. So, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk more to, uh, with John in a second. Um, I don't have the clicker, but if you could, OK. Which, just straight ahead? OK. OK. So what we're trying to do is enable people to be in, in more than one place at a time. And we'll talk about uh, reasons why you might want to do that in a minute. But um, if you can be there in person, that's, a, that's always the best thing. And you can see there are other technologies and other ways that you can communicate with people that are, that are less effective in doing so. So this is our first attempt to sort of bridge the gap between static video conferencing um, and being there in person. Um, a lot of people will, sit, will, will ask, well, why, why don't you just uh, have someone use Skype? and take a laptop, and, and then you can get the mobility that way. Um, there's a lot of issues with that, and I won't go, go into it in detail, but the, the sort of the big two ish, uh, problems are, um, one is that you then have to have someone tend to that, that far end Skype device. So instead of having um, two people come and do something, uh, sorry, one person, you know, the person that's remote, you really need to have two, because someone has to be um, controlling that PC, pointing the camera in the right direction. Um, the other thing that we see with something like Skype is that it's a, it's a shared, when you have that on a PC and you have multiple people wanting to use it, and then it's a shared device, and inevitably it always gets screwed up. Um, think of your, your own, probably, smartphone if you've got kids like I do, and you leave this on the kitchen table, and you come back half an hour later, it, you can't use it because it's completely reprogrammed. And the same thing happens with, with PCs that are shared. Um, we have a... Um, one of our customers, Oregon Health and Sciences University, did a trial where they put Vigos in elder people's homes. And, uh, and the results were great. Prior to that, they had done a trial putting Skype into people's homes, elder people's homes, for family to visit and for healthcare professionals to visit. And, and it failed. And it's because the PC was never in the, uh, uh, set up at the right moment to, to receive that incoming call. Say cheese. There's John taking a photo, a photograph of you guys. Um, okay, so, so how well, does this work? Everybody's taking pictures of me, so. Yeah. <laughs> how does this work? So um, it's, it's pretty simple. We've tried to make it as simple as possible. There's an application that you download onto your PC, and then from there you have a list of Vigos that you have access to. And it could be your personal Vigo, in which case it's only you, or it could be 
anybody in your company or anybody in a particular facility and you just click on it and then instantly you're there your face is there now then you can see and hear and communicate and within your PC application you have a set of driving controls very simple you use your mouse and basically you just point to where you want to go and the Vega will go there uh, depending on where your mouse pointer is uh, changes direction and, and, and its speed so it's it's pretty simple uh, in healthcare and right now we're in we're in three different markets um, healthcare, um, education, and also business. And probably half of our users are healthcare users today. We've only been shipping for a few months, so this is still new for, for, for most everybody. But these are sort of the applications that, that we're seeing people in healthcare um, purchase the, the systems for, and I'll talk more about each one of these in a second. Um, it's also worth mentioning that, because there were some comments earlier about um, healthcare in the home, in particular, the role of the family caregiver. And we do see that as a huge opportunity in the future, but we, we think we have to get the price point lower to make that happen. Um, under $1,000, under $2,000, something like that. Um, we know how to get there. If any of you want to invest in uh, what our, our development costs to, to make that product, come see me when we're done. We're happy to do that. Um, but we do think that's, that will be a big market in, in, in the future. Um, these are some of um, the healthcare organizations that are using uh, Vigo today. And we're not being aggressive in the market yet because we're still get, getting going, we're still learning, but we are in production. Um, and John, maybe you could talk about uh, one of these users who's using it uh, for post-surgical care. Sure, no, I'd be happy to, uh, to provide a little bit of color. Um, we've got a number of, um, of different projects underway with different healthcare systems, but one that might be uh, noteworthy or of interest is a project that we're doing with uh, Children's Hospital here in the Boston area. They've got a, uh, a group of surgeons in their urology department that are actually looking to use Vigos um, for post-operative support with, with children. So the Vigo will, will actually go home with the family following a surgical procedure, and then it, it will be used for, um, for follow-up sessions with uh, both nurses and doctors uh, to ensure, number one, that, uh, that the patient is recovering as expected, but also in the event of uh, you know, problems that there's a sort of a first line of communication that happens with the, uh, uh, with the surgeon prior to mom and dad, you know, jumping into the car and, and, and taking the child back to, uh, to the hospital, to the emergency room, because I think as most people are aware, re readmissions can be, uh, can be costly and, uh, and, and create all kinds of issues. So that, that's one that's, um, that's interesting, both from a caregiver perspective and, and, and also, frankly, from, from an economics perspective, because um, there's, there's real perceived ROI. In all of these cases, the human benefits um, are readily apparent, but for all the people making their buying decisions, it's all about cost and their return on cost. And very specifically in the, in the trial that Children's Boston is doing, um, they're looking to significantly re reduce readmissions costs. That's their, that's their objective is to prove that out. Um, one, an area that's related uh, is education, and these are some some photographs of some of our users um, who have a health condition, either they were born with it or they, were de they developed it or maybe they were in an accident, that are using Vigo to go to school. Um, and in fact, if you, um, if you read Sports Illustrated, in, in, uh, a few weeks ago there was an article um, about a kid who's a sports fan that can't go to school and he uses Vigo to go to school. It's a, it's a great eight-page article, you can, you can check it out. Um, but anyway, just for some color, the one up in the left, that is a first grader on that Vigo who had a double lung transplant and um, is going to class. Um, the one on the right, uh, Chris, um, he has spina bifida. He hasn't been to school in six years. He's had tutors come in and he and is talking to his mother. It's just completely changed his life. Um, we have another... Uh, um, user who's, who's had a lot of press, his family's been very aggressive um, in getting the word out there because he had a kidney transplant and uh, the kidney's in the process of being rejected. His, his immune system is low and, and they're trying to get him back on the list to get another one. So um, he's been on the Today Show and he's been in, in other, uh, 
uh, he's, he was the kid in, in, in Sports Illustrated. So we have a lot of people that now they're starting to look at, at Vigo to, to go to school. And then um, the, the healthcare organizations themselves, the applications are, are in many different areas, but for the most part, it's around checking up on someone. Okay, we don't see Vigo necessarily as being the vehicle to, get, to give a diagnosis. Um, there you want to have probably higher quality, a bigger screen, ways to take uh, medical data through to the doctor. Um, there are other ways to do that. Maybe some, at some point those will be incorporated in, but right now in our efforts to keep the price low, we're just trying to get the people in front of their, the healthcare providers. Um, in the lower right here is um, a conversation between a doctor and, and a patient that's using a language interpreter. And maybe, John, you can talk about what we're doing with an application that we're developing with a partner around uh, language services. Yeah, sure, happy to help. I think probably most folks are aware that, that there's, there's in a lot of states, there's mandates to, uh, to provide language translation in a healthcare setting. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different uh, companies out there that provide those services. But it can be challenging to get that translator in front of that patient on a, on a timely basis. Um, so we've actually partnered up with a company called Language Services, and uh, we're jointly developing an application that you'll be able to access directly uh, through the Vigo, which would allow a nurse or a doctor to, uh, to, to directly route a, uh, a translation call to the appropriate agent within uh, the Language Services uh, group uh, so that they can provide uh, translation in, in real time. And we sort of view this as, as sort of the, probably the first of what will be many applications that, uh, that would be native to, uh, to, to Vigo. Over time, we'll build a whole ecosystem around these sorts of services. So our, our model in general is that the people who are with the Vigo never touch it. It's completely remote controlled. And anything that has to be done to it, the person who is on the far end, they, they do it. It's them. Um, they dock it when they're done to charge the battery. Battery lasts up to 12 hours. Um, and, and in this case, it's a little bit different. In this case, you're getting a service by going to the screen. So there'll be a menu on the screen that says um, Spanish or Croatian or American Sign Language. And you just press a button, and then instantly that interpreter is, is there for you. Um, so so with, th with that, if there are any questions, I'd, I'd be happy to take them. And I'm going to set John on the floor here, and maybe he can um, come say hi to a few guys. Or if, uh, if you want to come uh, before you go to lunch and speak to John or have, any, have us ask, answer any questions, we can do that. Uh, as you can see, it's light. That's one of the things that we've tried to work very hard on. If you want to carry it upstairs or throw it in the trunk of your car or move it from one place to another, you can. And uh, it's lightness as well. You can see in the design, there's a lot of air there, so we, we, we make it, we've tried to work hard to make sure that it doesn't look threatening. Most people haven't it's seen something like this approaching uh, down the hallway coming at them. So uh, we need to make sure that people don't feel as though it's going to hurt you when you first approach it. So yeah. with, yes, my, my Vigo body weighs about 18 pounds, which is not so true for my uh, real body. <laughs> Yeah, so we'd like to uh, take a couple of questions, but as usual, just because we want to be able to capture, make sure everyone hears them, if you could stand up so we could get you a microphone. And uh, while you're thinking about uh, uh, your questions, I will share that um, our friends on Twitter are, are uh, exhibiting their wit. We have all kinds of comments from, uh, I want to smooch the Vigo, and <laughs> the Vigo is hot, and can you put a Roomba on the bottom so it's vacuuming <laughs> while it moves around? <clears throat> Um, so questions for Ned, uh, trying to look around to see if we have, uh, have those. Yeah, please, Mark. Microphone's coming right behind you, Mark. Hi, I'm actually videotaping this for my blog. Hi, Vigo. <laughs> I'm a blogger with MyFabulousDisease.com. Can I ask you just a simple question? Oh, you seem to be hung up on someone's chair. Here, there you go. <laughs> Um, okay, what is the best, what do you think is the most outstanding advantage of this technology for a patient like me? Um, it's really the mobility, it's the ability to, to have a real-time interaction um, with a patient in, in a situation where you might not be able to get 
that specialist or that particular uh, caregiver in front of that patient that quickly. Um, it, 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 at the heart of it, that's really what it's all about. Thank you. This is a little freaky, y'all. <laughs> Hey, I resemble that remark. <laughs> Are there other questions? Ned, maybe, you know, when, when we first uh, met and we spoke on the phone, uh, I jumped to the conclusion, I thought, wow, you know, physicians don't have to leave home in the morning to go on rounds and all that. I thought, this is great, you know, everyone's going to want to save time and save travel. And you said, that's not, that hasn't been the initial uptake and there's some challenges with this idea of rounding through hospitals with it. Maybe you can share a little bit more about that. Yeah, and I, and I shouldn't say that that won't be the case because certainly um, we do have people that are doing that. Uh, if you're a patient, I think you, you want to be able to see your doctor face to face and you'd prefer if they were there face to face. So it's a question of um, really one, one of those times when you can't be. And so um, where people are doing rounds, we are seeing it typically where maybe they have to go in and only see one or two people. Where the, where the trip doesn't, doesn't justify their time. Um, but the, uh, going forward, we believe for, for doctors to really take advantage and do rounds, let's say, then we need to add some other things. So uh, navigation is one of the big things on our list where the doctor can say, okay, I'm in room 37B, now I'm gonna go to 37C, and it just goes there by itself and they don't have to drive it. You know, you don't wanna have to spend the time driving it. So, there are little things like that, that 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 we have to overcome with respect to how people normally do things. And so right now we're focused on those applications where the benefit is just so overwhelming, like the kid that can't go to school. You know, right now they, there's no other way for them to go to school other than Vigo. And in healthcare there are some, some things that we can do where there's no other way to do it, no other way to get the person in front of the patient unless you've got a solution like Vigo. And so that's what we're focusing on. But in time, we really do believe that there will be one in every elder's house, there'll be one in every office, and there'll be one in every department uh, in, inside of a healthcare organization. Sounds great. 